Hello and welcome one and all to AEW Unrestricted, the official podcast of All Elite Wrestling, and it is Wembley Week. Can we say Wembley Week? Because it's like, it's not really Wembley anymore. We had Dynamite in Cardiff. We have Collision coming up in Cardiff, too. We have a crazy week in the UK here. I'm so excited. We are. Uh, look, I, I'm really excited because, uh, one, uh, if you're watching the video edition of this, we are in the same place. In the not, same spot. You're not seeing it. He's been AI here. the whole time, but uh, no, know, he's real. Right? No, I am real. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, we, we are actually here in London. Uh, we are just days away days. from the biggest event of the year, AEW All In London, yes. the second edition of uh, All In London, the third edition overall. Um, it's an exciting time. We obviously just announced All In Texas Y'all next in. year. Y'all In. Y'all In. Uh, as yeah, the AEW <laughs> fan base has affectionately <laughs> dubbed it. Um, this is just a really cool time, and I'm really excited about this show. Last year was a blast, and uh, to actually get to be here a much longer amount of time to to have done Cardiff to dude uh, yes yes like can I just tell a story real quick because we're like coming in uh to Heathrow and we're walking down this like hallway trying to get to the hotel my husband's like oh is this kind of what you did last year I'm like bitch we came from Atlanta Dynamite last year like we got off the plane did fan events did Wembley and then went to Chicago <laughs> yeah it, it was such a quick turnaround i don't even i don't think i even had time to like adjust time zones so this one has been really nice because we've gotten a chance to see all of the aew fan base as they've come in they've gotten to see all the different things like just having dynamite in the uk has been so huge like so incredible and oh my god the fans in wales i've heard so many things and they delivered yes good job yeah now honestly i have been so thrilled about everything that we've got going on including this incredible card uh Look, I've been looking forward to all of this for a very, very long time. Who hasn't been? And uh, you might even say I've been counting down the day <laughs> to the final countdown because uh, title versus career, AEW World Championship on the line. Swerve Strickland defends the AEW World Championship against the American Dragon, Brian Danielson. Uh, if Brian does not win, this is... This is his, last his match. final match. Like, like, okay, so at what point do we start crying on this podcast? Because that's kind of how I feel right now. Like, uh, so, so here's the problem with this. Here's the problem. Both of these guys are great, right? Like, mm-hmm. you and I have been very open about our fandom for Brian Danielson. We think he's yes. the greatest wrestler of all time. Greatest However, all time. both of us have also been open about our love for Swerve Strickland. You're biased towards him, having been related. Spoilers. Um, but also, like, Swerve and I came up on the indies together. Like, mm-hmm. he's a Washington guy, and he's been a phenomenal champion for AEW. He has been representing this company wonderfully, and he's been doing it even before he got the title. Uh, so, f- franchise player. He's sticking around a very long time. And it's one of those things where we know we've got Swerve for the long haul. Yes. Brian Danielson, we don't know how much time we have with him. Uh, as th- th- could be, th- this could be it, you know, for everything Brian has talked about um, and how much, uh, you know, he's physically breaking down and how uh, we always knew this was going to be the last year of his career. Uh, we knew for a fact that uh, he, he's talked about how his contract is up. He's yes. working without a contract. Yes. Um, and we've seen these two go at it once before. Um, it was a match uh, last October, Title Tuesday, Sora Strickland, Brian Danielson. Uh, and I remember walking away from that match going, God, that match on a bigger stage. Like they had delivered in that moment. And I remember thinking did. about that match being on a bigger stage and what they could do with uh, a bigger platform. And for these two to be on the biggest stage that AEW has, AEW All In, uh, getting to see Swerve Strickland, who a year ago uh, was on this All In card mm-hmm. um, in a coffin match where he teamed with Christian Cage against Sting and Darby Allen. To see where he went in that year to see the trajectory he hit from the feud with hangman adam page oh my god to going on to samoa joe becoming the AEW world champion beating christian cage beating will osprey it doesn't feel like his train is stopping no. it doesn't feel like the momentum is slowing down he's hitting the station full speed brakes aren't working yeah he's, like he's still got so much more to go with this run but at the same time brian danielson is again I think he's the greatest wrestler of all time. The greatest. And I think in order for that to be a true statement, it can't end without the AEW World Championship. I'm just, like, it's, I'm I'm sad with the outcome of this, but I'm happy with the outcome of this. There's no way that I can be, like, there there will be an emotional outcome either way. It's, 
we're we're either going to see Swerve loses his title and we see, you know, a title on the guy who is the greatest uh, wrestler of all time, who I, I mean, it's it's just incredible that thought or we literally see Brian Danielson's last match. Like it's I, I don't even want to say it. like we know this date has been coming, but it's I'm not ready. Right. I, <laughs> I'm not I, am, ready. I am genuinely not ready. No, but at the same time. We, we've got a few days to get there and an entire four-hour show before that main event hits. But I, I'm so excited for this. And uh, I think no matter what, I know it's a cliche thing to say, but I feel like everybody wins for, for where we're about to be with Swerve Strickland uh, defending the AEW World Championship against Brian Danielson. Title versus career, the final countdown. <sighs> also, just shout out to the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Right? Pretty cool. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is just cool all around. I am so excited for. We're all very uh, just excited. as a fan, uh, as a friend, all of this. <sighs> I couldn't be more thrilled for everybody involved. It's yeah. just a really cool thing to see and to see kind of wrestling come to to this point just naturally. Like it's one of those things. Like I, I was talking to someone recently. Like Sting had this phenomenal career, right? And the way he went out was so great. Mm -hmm. And it's it's hard to make things like that happen in wrestling where you have these great moments as people are on the way out. And I just know that with all of the time that Brian Danielson has spent with AEW, all of it has been excellent. And the things he's done for us on screen, behind the scenes, I really hope this isn't the last one. But if it is, like I will be have, I, I will be so grateful to have had the opportunity to work with him. Yeah. And and shout out to uh our, our incredible video team last week dude good riddance dude uh -oh. okay <laughs> holy crap so like the purchase of roh like was was made like that's why you did that <laughs> right <laughs> being able to see like video clips of young brian danielson come through the curtain and then like hug roderick strong or like you see claudio castagnoli and it's like oh all of these guys are just they know each other. There's so much history here. And yeah. it was just so absolutely incredible. So shout out to our production team because that was an excellent, excellent package. Yes. Um, but title matches continue yes. on this card because the AEW World Tag Team Championship is on the line. Uh, the Young Bucks, the EVPs, defend the AEW World Tag Team titles against FTR and the Acclaim oh boy. in a three-way Uh this is a, this has been an interesting road to get here mm -hmm. because uh, the acclaimed, of course, defeated the Young Bucks in an eliminator. Uh, it feels like an eternity ago. Um, and, in wrestling, yes. yes and, <laughs> and they earned what you would call the right to face the Young Bucks. They are the number um, one contenders. Yes, they earned that spot. They earned that spot. And they had their match this past uh, a week ago. They had a match a week ago. Um, and the Young Bucks won by disqualification, which most would say that that's not a satisfying conclusion poor rick knox and uh and then also on the other side of that you've got the young bucks greatest rivals ftr uh the team that the young bucks faced last year in wembley they faced them at dynasty where they won the aw world tag team championship uh ftr is on a mission to once again become aw world tag team champions and we also saw the time limit draw on collision we did. There's, there's we did. so much at stake here between these three teams. Um, I think the Young Bucks have a lot to prove here. I think when you think about the fact that last year at Wembley, we saw FTR defeat the Young Bucks uh, and cement themselves for what they would call themselves the greatest tag team of all time. We, You and I literally sat here. We had the conversation yep. about uh, who the better team was. But at the end of the day, FTR, they defeated the Young Bucks. Mm -hmm. They were the better team. Uh, but then the acclaimed also had a great night last year. They defeated House of Black, and became along trios with champions. Billy Gunn, they became the trios champions. Uh, but then you have to look at the Young Bucks. They didn't get their Wembley moment last mm -hmm. year, and so for them, to me, it feels like in order to make that right and to make all things right in the world, the Young Bucks have to hold on to those World Tag Team titles. But at the same time, you look at the fire the acclaimed has had lately. This is a team that is not wanting to go down as uh, a team that 
you know, they, they've had a lot of great success as a trio. Um, they had great success when they won the tag team titles the first time when they beat Swerve in Our Glory. But I think they want to remind people that that wasn't a one-time thing. They weren't a flash in the pan team, that they still have that same fire that they had two years ago, and they are coming back for those world tag team titles. But then you have FTR. Oh my FTR God. is ready to become three-time AEW World Tag Team Champions. And how do they do that? Uh, they have to defeat either one of these teams, teams that they do have history with. All three of these teams really, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? These, these teams are the example of what the AEW. They're the epitome of tag epitome, team wrestling. There it is. There you they're go. the epitome of what the AEW tag team I division should be the is. Yes. <laughs> and they, they've, they've spent the last five years of AEW, um, I, I suppose. Really, the, the acclaimed and FTR really came in around the same time in 2020. Uh, but Time is for, a flat circle. <laughs> yes. But for the majority of the time in AEW, these have really been the three teams that have uh, been kind of at the forefront. Uh, they are the epitome of the AEW World Tag Team division. And to get to share the stage together at Wembley is just... We've, uh, you couldn't ask for anything bigger. We've seen them all carry goals. We know they're all capable of being champions. But we literally wouldn't have all in without the Young Bucks. Yeah. So I don't know if that's just sort of because they didn't have their Wembley moment. Maybe that's the chip on their shoulder. I don't know. Like this, this is one of those matches that could honestly go any way. One of three ways. One, one of three. Everyone loves a good three way. All right. So we've got more to talk about here on AEW Unrestricted. Coming up, this card is massive and we've got way, way more to talk about. AEW Unrestricted. It's Aubrey Edwards. Hi. It's Will Washington. Yo. We are talking about All In London. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that merch. Look at the merch. Shop AEW.com. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are uh, we're talking about this card, this wonderful card, this wonderful nine-match card, um, and there's still so much to go on this show. Um, you know, we just talked about the AEW World Championship. We talked about the World Tag Team titles. But uh, let's go to a different part of the world, uh, a part of the world that, you know, this was a title that used to represent uh, the, oh, the are we going to talk about this shit? Globally, but, but uh, <laughs> the, the title has definitely uh, shrunken down its its coverage. Right. Um, the former mm -hmm. international championship, uh, now the AEW American championship. It's wrong. It's all kinds of wrong. I'm sorry. I, I can't support this. It's... MJF defending <laughs> the American championship against... Will Ospreay. Okay. Like, like uh, so here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, there was a point in time where Max came back and we were all very excited to see him. And then he shows his true colors. And we remember that he's actually Maxwell Jacob Friedman. And why were we all tricked all along? Yeah. Of course. Oh, oh yes. He's, he's been very Max since he's been he's back. He's been very Max since he's been back. But he has this incredible, incredible match with Will Ospreay, which of course, because you've got literally one of the faces of AEW from day one, along with Will Ospreay, future legend, and they're battling it out. How long did they go? 59 minutes, 58 seconds? Yep. Yeah. So even though Max says it was an easy W, we all saw. Like, <laughs> that was a ridiculous match. It was. And to know that that was a match where the title changed hands and then suddenly it became the AEW American title, it's just like, it's hard because I think in traditional wrestling, like the Americans, they're supposed to be the good guys and then like boo the other guys. And it feels weird being the other way around. <laughs> But honestly, like, screw America, man. <laughs> We're in the UK. <laughs> I'm all about Will Ospreay on this one. <laughs> uh, so my my feeling here is that, uh, you know, he's he said easy W uh, multiple times over. But I he think, says it with an oxygen tank on him, by the way. Uh, well, I, if I can appeal to the the basketball fans out there, that was really what we like to call a buzzer beater. Mm, um, good reference. And, good reference. Uh, that being how Max got the victory should tell you that that was as close and as competitive of a victory as you can get. Yep. And uh, it was two seconds away from being a draw. But here we are now. Uh, we're entering Osprey country. Oh, I'm so excited. You know, Osprey last year had an incredible match with Chris Jericho. Oh my God. In like his, and, his backyard, basically. Yes. Like, he had an incredible moment last year. He wasn't even a part of the company. And now... Will Ospreay is arguably a bigger part of this company, I, dare I say it, than Max. I feel like Will Ospreay is just an incredible leader for both our talent, for this company. Like, this is like Max is going to come find me after this. <laughs> 
But the things that Will you has done. You said not me. I know, I know. Let's let's be real here. Do, do not hurt Will Washington. <laughs> this is an Aubrey Edwards stance. <laughs> but I, I honestly feel like Will is just seeing him in become who he is as a person, not just as a wrestler. But it, it's one thing to have a guy come in and do a couple matches here and there, but to see him become a part of this company and a part of this roster in the way that he has and how he knows that everything he does reflects on AEW. I just, I, I want to get behind Will on this. I, I, I really agree. do. I, I do think he's been one of the great flag bearers of AEW. Yes. Um, he represents this company so well. And... Uh, to get to return to his backyard and have a chance to reclaim the championship that he feels was stolen from him and uh, and to restore it to its former glory as the international championship. Yeah, that'd be great. Yes. Uh, but we've got other titles we on do. the line. We do. Uh, <gasps> because, uh, oh my God. Speaking of people who are entering their backyards. Oh, buddy. Um, oh, buddy. This one's going to be a good one. Okay. Yes. So, like, let's let's just... Shout out to Tony Storm and Mariah May, who have this storyline has just been so absolutely excellent. And to see Tony Storm change from rock and roll Tony Storm to outcast Tony Storm to timeless Tony Storm, at the same time we see her protege Mariah May come in, who, and I hate it, because at the very beginning, she told us exactly what was going to happen. She did. She told us she was going to be Tony Storm. And I feel like, I feel so terrible having missed it, right? Like, we were all so trusting. We saw her come in. We saw her grow. We saw her become this amazing wrestler. She became a part of our locker room. And then she just beat Tony Storm's head in with a shoe. And I have never gone from loving someone to hating someone so quickly <laughs> that I have Mariah May. Like, this, oh, man. And I think both of these women are excellent competitors. And... There is something that something else that comes out in someone when there's gold on the line. We know that Tony Storm has defended this title on multiple instances in pay-per-view settings. She faced Deanna Prazo. She faced Thunder Rosa. She faced multiple competitors to retain this title time and time again. And we see Mariah May literally doing the thing that she said she was going to do this whole time. I don't think I don't know if there's anything that can face her. No, and I think that, uh, you know, she has proven that she was going to do anything to take Tony Storm's spot. She's quite literally out for blood. And now we're here, and we're entering Mariah May's backyard. Mm. Um, but the difference is, Mariah is relatively unknown to our audience. Even as the audience thought they were getting to know Mariah May, it turns out they didn't know Mariah May at all. None of us know <laughs> Mariah May, apparently. And so... <laughs> Uh, I think that makes this a very, very fascinating scenario because uh, I think even with all of that said, Tony Storm is still going to have the fans behind her. Oh, 100 percent. And I think that uh, I think the fans are going to want to see Tony Storm retain her AEW Women's World Championship. And there's a lot of momentum that can drive Tony to kind of putting Mariah back in her place and uh, reminding the fans that even with everything Mariah concocted in winning the Owen Hart, uh, winning the Owen Hart tournament and turning her back on Tony Storm and effectively murdering Luther. Uh, oh, buddy. We, Get well soon, man. <laughs> uh, even with all of that, I think Tony Storm has a chance to remind Mariah that she's still got a long way to go. And she will still be the AEW Women's World Champion. Like, that's one of the beauties of wrestling, right? Is you have people who the fans get behind and they say, this is our champion. And we have seen that with Timeless Tony Storm. The fans are so behind her that even though we are entering Mariah's home country, everyone's behind Tony. Yeah. We're all behind Tony. I the, like this is going to be one of those matches where it's going to be excellent, regardless of the outcome. I'm hoping. Tony retains, I'm just saying. But regardless of the outcome, I think it's going to be an incredible match. And I could not be more proud of both of these women for all of the things that they have done. Like, independent of who I like and who I dislike, I give credit where it's due. Both of them have come a very, very long way and have done amazing things for AEW. And I'm Absolutely. so happy. 
Well, we've been talking about all kinds of title matches on this card so far. Literally only title matches. But one of the ones that I'm most excited about is we've got Jack Perry versus Darby Allen for the TNT Championship in a coffin match. And we saw Jack Perry come out in collision with this brand new, like, blood painted pewter coated title shout out jack perry that yeah. video he posted had no <laughs> idea he was a metalsmith but goddamn like, yeah <laughs> that was very cool. cool i was like you're gonna put all other arts and crafts to shame buddy like <laughs> pretty dope you kind of have to retain this now right but at the same time we see he's challenging darby to a coffin match has Darby ever lost a coffin match? Darby has not lost a coffin match. Uh, we talked about this last year. Right. Uh, and we talked about that, it, you know, Swerve and, and Christian could be the ones to finally beat him. And nope. they weren't. Didn't happen. Uh, and now here we are, Darby Allen versus Jack Perry. Um, this is Darby Allen's match. Uh, but then when you think about the TNT Championship, it's also Darby Allen's title, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, it's a belt that Darby Allen defended night in, night out as he had it during the pandemic oh when God. he won it after the pandemic. He had like he... nine title defenses in a row. It was wild. Yeah, Darby Allen um, really made that belt special and he made it his. And I think that Darby is out to prove that one more time. Uh, I think the one difference here is that Darby never had anyone light him on fire. Yeah. And yeah, that, that'll kind of kind of light a fire under your ass. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> literally, <laughs> quite literally. <laughs> and and knowing that Jack Perry has been lit on fire, um, that is something I could very much see. Things you only say in wrestling. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could very much see that uh, being the catalyst to um, Jack Perry possibly retaining this championship. But I don't know, man. Darby Allen, it, it's been, again, the, the TNT title is such an important part of who Darby Allen is. Uh, to me... This one could go either way, but I, I think this is Darby's to, to take home. I, I think it's too hard to call. I think Jack's got a lot to prove. He wants to be the guy that actually puts Darby in a coffin. Why else would you make the statement knowing the, the stats that we do? But Darby is relentless. He will literally do anything necessary to make sure that he wins his matches. So this is this is going to be a really interesting one to watch. Um, there's still, we barely even touched all of the card on this one, and we've got so much more to talk about here on AEW Unrestricted. We'd re-return from our quick commercial break. AEW Unrestricted, it's Aubrey and Will, and hey. we're talking about All in London. And don't forget, you can check out All in London on pay-per-view, uh, all of your favorite platforms it's available on. You can check us out on Triller, um, which actually has a great deal on uh, All in. You can get the package that also includes All Out. <gasps> um, and so definitely check that out. You yes. can also check us out on Bleacher Report Hell yeah. um, and follow AEW Socials for all other platforms we're available on. Um, you can also be there in person. You yes. want to be there. Yes. Uh, Wembley Stadium is such an experience. If you haven't had the opportunity to check out Wembley Stadium, this is the time to do so. It's insane. I still remember walking into the building and crying last year. It's, it's just such a phenomenal thing. And to be a part of that huge of a show, like knowing we're not going to be at Wembley next year. Like, we're going to be in Texas, y'all. So, I mean, if, if you're on the fence, this is the time to do it. AEWTix.com. Yes, AEWTix.com. Get All right. your tickets. But let's talk about it. We've got the TBS Championship on the line. Mercedes Monet, the reigning and defending TBS champion, is going to be defending the title against the returning Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. We saw Dr. Britt Baker return at Forbidden Door uh, just a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. And here we are now, two months later. She finally gets her hands on Mercedes Monet. Uh, Mercedes not alone anymore. Though. No. Mercedes introduced the AEW audience to Camille. The Brick House. The Brick House. And you have to think that given how she has been a factor in uh, Mercedes uh, just recently retaining the title over the three-time AEW Women's World Champion Hikaru Shida, and just knowing that, um, you know, Britt Baker, one of the longest reigning AEW Women's World Champions of all time, and somebody who's looking to be the first person to capture both the world title and the TBS championship, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Camille's got to be somebody that she's looking out for. I mean, she's got to be looking out for her because she took that boot to the face. Yeah. Oh, Lordy. That was like Camille is scary because she's strong. She's silent. You have no idea how deadly she is. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we've seen Mercedes wrestle on AEW 
television multiple times. We've seen her defend the TBS title. She, we knew before she even came in, she was a phenomenal wrestler. Mercedes Monet has punched holes in the ceiling of women's wrestling and has is a complete, complete and utter legend. And she's still so early in her career. But we've seen Britt Baker be here since day one. She was at the original All In. She's been here. She is, as she says, you know, the face of the women's division. So, I mean, this is actually a pretty, in my opinion, even though Britt's had some time off, I feel like this is a pretty equal match. Yes. Um, it, 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 it can be in a lot of senses. Uh, but, you know, we one of the things Mercedes said a few weeks ago when she pointed out, she said that Britt Baker is the first in a lot of respects. She was the first woman signed to AEW. She was the first woman to main event um, AEW television, and she's done it on multiple occasions. Yep. Uh, and she said, you are the first, but you're not the best. Mm. Uh, and Mercedes can make the argument for being one of the best. Absolutely. And no question. To note that she has all of those accolades that Mercedes Monet, you know, we didn't even talk about the fact that she's the New Japan Strong Women's Champion as well. That is a belt. Mercedes she's two also, belts. Yep. She's carrying around two belts at the moment. And to know that Mercedes is as good as she is, and she went ahead and got herself an, an insurance policy in Camille, uh, I think to Smart. me that uh, that is going to keep those championships on Mercedes Monet for a very long time. That's just a CEO doing good business. That's what CEOs do. That's what CEOs do. Oh, man. Yeah, no, this is, this is going to be a great one. I mean, CEO, CEO. Watch our oh, shitty yeah. dancing on the YouTube version yeah, of this. So, sorry. <laughs> well, look. This uh, is what we do. This is what we do. It's been a very long week. Uh, we're finally acclimated to the time zone, and then we'll quickly switch back as we start heading towards <laughs> back to the U.S. Um, we we have multiple incredible women's matches on this card, and we'll get to uh, one more coming up a little bit. Um, but we've got Jericho and Hook, the FTW title. Hook is back. He is missing an eyeball. or He's, he's blind. He's, he's hurt from this fireball that he took from Jericho, right? And Jericho is giving him the option, all right, you can challenge me for the FTW title, but if I win, you never get to challenge for it again as long as Chris Jericho, the learning tree, is champion. And I think it's an interesting stipulation. Like, we saw Hook win the title back again last year. He took the title off of Jack Perry uh, at the zero hour. He did. So Hook has th – this is, this is territory that Hook is familiar with. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, Hook – has been the challenger for the FCW title on multiple occasions. Um, and he's looking to win that championship back for a third time, uh, and, which is just insane to think about um, how a title that was uh, created by Taz and associated <laughs> so long with Taz is now a belt that Hook's looking to win for the third time. I completely forget that it's a Taz belt. Yeah, I mean... It, it's, it's just, To me, it's synonymous with Hook. Yeah, it literally says Taz on the belt. Um, but, <laughs> but, like but, they're related? What? But but the thing is, uh, Chris Jericho is, of course, you know, he's turned it into the For the World Championship. Uh, and he'll tell you how many days he's been champion. <laughs> yep, he's got the Tron doing it for us. He's got Love the video it. wall. It, it Love tells it. You. Um, but yeah, uh, Hook is, he's looking to put the learning tree behind him. And I think in order to do that, He's got to walk away with the victory. Mm -hmm. um, if not, no matter what, the learning tree is behind him. Uh, and how, how does he he pull that off? But at the same time, Chris Jericho isn't ever alone. He's got the bad apple, Brian Keith. Oof. He's got uh, the big redwood, Big Bill. Oof. God, it's so good. Uh, so uh, who, who knows? Oh. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Hook. This is going to be a great match at Wembley. <laughs> hey, let's talk a little bit about this casino uh, gauntlet match. Yes. Because uh, it gives you a guaranteed world title shot in the future. Yes, at any point. At any and, point. At any point. Ooh. And think about the previous casino gauntlet matches. We, we first saw this match on the April 24th edition of AEW Dynamite. It was won by Will Ospreay. Mm. Um, and it guaranteed him a shot at the international championship. Which he won off of Rod Roderick Strong. Which he won off of Roderick Strong. There but then we go. saw the match a second time uh, at the Forum. And uh, it was also won by Will Ospreay. Uh, and that guaranteed him a shot uh, at Swerve Strickland, which he was not successful at. Nope. Uh, Great match. But, but thinking about the fact that now we've got the Casino Gauntlet. I assume, without Will Ospreay, uh, because he's kind of tied up with MJF at the moment. A little bit. Uh, he's kind of busy on the show already. <laughs> and so 
uh, it, it's a match that he has definitely perfected. But at the same time now, we've got this completely open field. We know Orange Cassidy is going to be opening the match. Um, and uh, as, we, as you know, the rules of the match are that every few minutes a competitor enters um, until the first fall is scored. Uh, which it means... could end as soon as the second guy comes out. Yes. That's one uh, of the things I love about this match, right? Is that It could literally end. That that is you the don't advantage even know. of being in it. That's the <laughs> advantage of being in it first. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, that first advantage can turn into a disadvantage because the longer it goes on, oh, the longer you've been in the match. You're tired. And so you you want to end it as quickly as possible. At the same time, we could see any number of names enter this match uh, because the match keeps adding participants until a fall has been scored. We could end up seeing a hundred people enter this match if nobody scores a fall. Uh, and, oh. and that uh, it's one of my favorite matches that we do in AEW. It's one of the greatest creations. I think I've told Tony this multiple times. It's one of the greatest things that we've added to the AEW repertoire of matches. Uh, and the last one at the forum, I thought was just, you know, I'd call it an A. Uh, and this one here feels like uh, with the potential of being an A plus, uh, being on as big of a stage as it's going to be. And knowing the the potential talent that could enter this is going to be a really exciting one there's so many opportunities for some cool stuff here i'm really excited for this wrestling is all about surprises and things happening when you least expect them and this match kind of puts all of that on a silver platter right. it's it's so good it's so wonderful speaking of good and wonderful i want to talk about willow nightingale i want to talk about how she's teaming <laughs> with tomohiro ishii and she's facing chris statlander at stokely hathaway in a mixed tag match on the zero hour. I am so stoked about this because who doesn't love Willow? Willow is great. She's and, amazing. And also uh, who doesn't who likes Stokely? Nobody. Uh, but but the <laughs> fact that she has uh, no comment there. I'm not okay. gonna play any favorites that's fine, that's here. Fine. But I but I will say that uh, you know it was it was quite crafty of her to to team up with her, her fellow conglomeration mate in uh, Big Tom. And uh, knowing that 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 Stokely, knowing that Stokely is going to be stepping into an AEW ring oh, again, by the way, because you know we talked about Hook before, uh, and that Stokely Hathaway at one point uh, did face off with Hook. Do you remember when he lost last time? He had to walk down the hall, and all of us were laughing at him. Yeah, it was one of my favorite days of work ever. <laughs> and but here. On his side, though, That's, is, is the very dangerous Fair. Chris Statlander. Uh, Chris Statlander is, is ultimately the X factor here mm -hmm. because Chris Statlander, um, there's very few people you could put her against, and I wouldn't bet on Chris Statlander. Yeah, oh, 100%. And knowing that, at the very least, if this were Stokely on his own, done deal. I'd probably bet my house. But uh, Same. knowing that. <laughs> Uh, he's got Chris Statlander by his side. She's more than a woman. She is uh, one of the greatest AEW women's wrestlers of all time. And uh, she's been out to prove a lot ever since uh, Double or Nothing. And here she is with the opportunity to, uh, before going one-on-one -on -one with Willow Nightingale at All Out, she gets a chance to... Uh, to make a statement because there is something on the line here. Yes, this match has a stipulation. Yes, you know, if Willow and Big Tom win, Big Tom. then they get to choose the stipulation for the match at All Out between Willow and Chris Statlander. And if Stokely and Chris Statlander get the victory, they get to choose the stipulation. So there's a lot at stake here. Uh, and I just, you know, I always love seeing Willow and Chris Statlander go at it. I think their matches get better with every single uh, time and they get more intense, more hated, more heat. I, uh, I've been very happy watching these two go at it. Um, They're a pair that when they broke up, I was very heartbroken because I loved seeing them together. Mm -hmm. But when both of them are in the ring, whether they're teaming together or facing each other, everybody wins yep. because the two of them are phenomenal competitors and they have so much fire in them. And they're two and two. So knowing really? that, yeah. So knowing that they, uh, they have, they very much have a score to settle with each other. Yeah. Um, 
this is going to be really exciting. I'm very I, excited for this. I'm I'm excited for this whole card. I, I I mean, just going through all of this earlier when we were running through our notes, I have no idea what match I'm most excited about. I'd say Swerve and Brian just because of the emotional factor. But honestly, each one of these is going to tell a phenomenal story. We're going to see all of these amazing competitors, whether they've been with AEW since the beginning or whether they've joined AEW sometime in the last five years. Everyone's going to have this awesome Wembley moment. And I could not be more proud of us as a company for pulling this off again. How the hell we we do these pay-per-views every freaking few weeks, <laughs> but they're always better than the last one. Definitely, definitely tune in. If you're here in the UK or if you can get to the UK, AEWTix.com, you definitely want to be there live at Wembley Stadium this Sunday. Please be there. If you can be there, you can watch it multiple different ways. You can watch it on traditional pay-per-view. You can watch it on Bleach Report. You can watch it on Triller TV. Follow AEW on all the social media accounts because we will sure tell you exactly all of the places you can watch it. You can watch Dynamite on TBS on Wednesdays. You can watch Rampage on TNT on Fridays. You can watch Collision on TNT on Saturdays. And, of course, you can watch Ring of Honor, Honor Club Thursdays. I am Aubrey Edwards here in person with Will Washington. Thank you for listening to AEW Unrestricted. We'll see you at Wembley, bitches.